If you want to rebuild the starter on your tractor, this is the video for you to watch. My name is Rachel Gingell. In this video, I'll walk you through all the steps to troubleshoot your starter and then to completely rebuild it. Today, I'm working on a Farmall M, but these techniques apply whether you're working on any Farmall letter series tractors, the A, B, C, H, or M, as well as the Supers. Also, if you're working on a different make of tractor that has a Delco starter on it, like a John Deere or Alice Chalmers, these techniques will also apply and you'll be able to follow along. So before you dig into the starter and determine that that's your issue, the issue could lay elsewhere. So let's talk about troubleshooting. First, you need to make sure that your battery does have adequate power. I have a 12 volt starter here, or a 12 volt tester. This also works on six volt systems. This M is 12 volt, but these techniques apply whether your tractor is six volt or 12 volt. So you hook up your tester to a ground connection. I have mine hooked up to my ground battery post or cable here. Just because it's really close and convenient, you could ground it elsewhere if that would be a better fit for your tractor. So I have the one end of my tester hooked up there and then I'm just gonna touch the opposite side and I have the light on so I know that my battery has power. Next, we should test the starter switch to make sure the switch is working as well as this cable to bring power to the starter. So. You can put your tester here on the terminal or on the cable here. Let's go ahead and take that off. We'll probably be able to see it a little bit easier if we take that cable off. So let me whip that off of there. Be careful when you're working with this that you don't touch your wrench to the gas tank as that is located right there and it'll be easy to do. So I'm just gonna set this aside. Let's take our cable off and then I'm gonna use my tester here. My dad's gonna press the switch and our light should still come on. Yes, it does. So that means that my switch is working and also that I do have power from the cable to the starter. That's good. If your light does not come on, then maybe your switch is bad, maybe your battery's bad. It could also be your ground battery connection. Those get corroded a lot. I mean, a lot, that's a very common issue. So t check all of those systems if your light doesn't come on. Another cause of problem could be the end of this cable. See how this is um, not shined up or brass, it looks kind of corroded. Sometimes those will look green too. You can just um, clean that up a little bit to make sure that you have a good clean connection on your starter if you're having trouble there. So you can just shine that up. like that and you can do both sides and then retest your connection if that was a problem on your tractor. If you do all those troubleshooting steps and still determine that your starter's the issue, then follow along, we'll rebuild this. Now that we're done with the troubleshooting, before you proceed to taking the starter off your tractor, go ahead and remove your ground battery cable just to prevent any accidental arcing. That'll just slip off and you can set it aside. There are just two bolts that hold the uh, starter onto the tractor. My bolts are three quarter inch, so you can go ahead and take those off. I actually have them loosened and I think that if I take the weight off them, I might go quicker with my fingers because you don't have much room for movement. I believe one of the bolts will stay on the starter. I don't think there's enough room for the clearance, but I can't remember what bolt it is. So let's wind this off of here. They're pretty long and the starter is a ways into the tractor as well. So that bolt's completely free. Just got a little bit more on this one. It'll come right out. The drive on the end, there it is. Once you have your starter off the tractor, it's a good idea to do some visual inspection to see if you can identify exactly where the problem is on your starter. You could look at this drive on the end, make sure that it moves back and forth freely, as mine does. Also, inspect those teeth and make sure that none of them are broken off. Mine are worn, but they're not broken. It'd be a good idea to also check the teeth on the flywheel and make sure that none of those are broken as well. So you can inspect that. Down on this end, you can take this cover off. Mine just screws off and then it will slip off the end. Then you can see the brushes are inside. Next, I'm gonna take this cover off of the end here. These are very long. You can see that they're um, the whole length of the starter. So it'll take a while to get them out. But once they come, we can take this cover off the end and we'll be able to see a lot more. This one will come right out like that. And on the other side, I already have this one loosened so it should pull right out for us, like so. Then the end here, you might need to 
use a brass hammer there to loosen it up just like I did and that will kind of loosen on the end. You can see that the brushes will come with that cover and then when you take these bolts out it releases this end so you can take that out. The armature will come this way like so and there's your cover. There are two screws here at the end of the case which you can remove. It'll pull apart our next step here. Just doing some quick inspection on my armature, you can see that this is shiny and this is not. That looks very worn. Yours might look the same. Got a screw on the opposite side here. So we'll take that out. If I can get my screwdriver in the head, there we go. One of these screws kind of has a head on it that looks like a bolt, the screw in the middle. And that comes apart like so. And that allows you to do more inspection of both the drive and the armature. Both of these bolts are ready to come out. Now I have them loosened up. Notice on the end of this back one that there is this type of set screw at the end where the threads end. That's only on this back bolt. Also, these are tabbed lock washers. I used a chisel to kind of pound that away or pry it away so that you can get your socket on there. I used a 5 8 inch socket on those. So take both of those out and then you'll be ready to pull this off of the end of your armature. There is a washer. Then you have your drive comes out as one assembly, like so. And lastly, your spring. You can take these extra parts off of your armature here. This just slides off the end. It might be a little bit tight, and if so, you could gently pry it off without hurting any of the other pieces. You'll see that there's this half moon key that can come out as well. And lastly, this big washer on the end with the bushing inside of it will slide off the end. The next thing we're gonna do is we'll test this armature and make sure that it's working properly. You can use a simple ohm meter to test your armature and make sure that it's working properly. You should test your probes and set them 180 degrees apart from each other. Then look at your ohm meter and make sure that you're getting a good reading from it. If you have no reading, it would mean that you have an open circuit. So you're setting your probes inside that groove that you can see there, 180 degrees across from each other, and you can move your probes around and test that in several different places to make sure that your armature is working properly. If you find that you have an open circuit in your armature, then you would need to replace it so that your starter will function for you. We sell a new armature. This is what it looks like right here. And uh, so you can just replace it very easily. In addition to an ohm meter test, you might also determine that you need a new armature if your shaft is worn or warped in any way, then you would want to replace your armature. If your armature passes the ohm test and you want to use your existing armature, then you should clean your commentator. There's a couple different ways that you could do that. My very first choice would be to use a lathe, but not everybody has a lathe in their shop. If you have access to a lathe and you can put the armature in that continuous motion and shine it up on a lathe, that would be awesome. A second choice would be to use a drill motor. If you have a drill motor that will accommodate the armature and then you know use the drill motor so it spins around and clean it up. A last choice, if you don't have either of those tools would be to use a vise like this one. You can see that I have it clamped in here so I'm not damaging the shaft at all. And then you can just use some fine sandpaper like this and shine it up. Just want to clean that commentator all the way up on all points of it. You're not standing so hard that you're going to make unnecessary grooves or anything. You just want to make sure that you're able to get a good contact on the commentator here. Your starter does have several bushings throughout. I'm going to show you how to replace the one that's on the end of my nose here and then you can follow that same process on the other bushings. So you can use a driver like this one, which fits down in there, it's the right size, and then drive that bushing out. Let's take a look at it down here. There's our old one. And then we have a new one to replace it with. Like so, you just follow that same process. You can use the same driver and uh, gently tap that down in there. You try to tap it straight. You wanna tap it all the way until it's flush. You'll drive that down in there. There's another bushing inside this washer here. 
And lastly, there's one on the very end here where the brushes are located. So you'll follow that same process to replace all the bushings. And all those new bushings are available from us at j and Productions. And um, this one is probably the most important to replace. This one gets a lot of wear on the end here. So I'm gonna drive this new one down. You can do the same. It's important to test the fields inside your case before you proceed. So again, use that same ohm meter that you used earlier. And you can touch your probes on each of the electrodes here. You want to make sure from your own meter that there's no short in the fields. And when I touch my probes here, I see that they do pass, so that's good. Then another test you can do is down here in the bottom where this terminal is, again, you want to make sure that they don't have a short, that they pass. My fields do. Most of the time they will, but if for some reason your fields are shorting out, you can replace them. This is what their replacement fields look like, purchasable from us at JB Productions. And you can also get a new terminal like this. However, this does require that you would have to solder that in. You can see the bottom here. So if you have that tool and you have that skill, go for it, replace those fields. If you don't, don't worry. That's not a super common problem in the starter. Normally the problems lie elsewhere. So don't don't be afraid of rebuilding the starter if you don't have that tool or that capability. But do make sure that you test that and make sure that your fields are not shorting out before you proceed. On your end cap, you do have a couple different options. One option would be to keep your existing end cap and replace only the brushes. The brushes on my end cap were really worn. You can see how much they're worn down here and uh, definitely need to be replaced. However, I think the end cap also needs to be replaced. And if yours looks in similar condition to mine, you'd want to do the same. We sell a complete new end cap like this. It comes with the bushing already installed as well as the uh, cap on the end. However, you do need to install your own brushes, use the screws from your old end cap and get new wires, and you'll use the existing ground wires. This will be the only wire that you get new. Uh, sometimes people will replace only the brushes, and the brushes are probably the most common problem with starters, so that could be a really easy fix for you where you could only replace the brushes and clean everything else up. So lots of different options. We're putting a new end cap with new brushes on. I have all of my brushes installed except for this last one. I'm gonna show you how they go in here. Notice that these are kind of spring-loaded like that, and I have my new brush here. These brushes are directional. You can see a slight diagonal there. I'm gonna put the shorter side to here. If you wanna think about that logically, you can kind of pull the spring out and think that this is gonna come out, come and go around and the brushes need to be flat when extended out. So that's how you can kind of remember that. Let me snap my, or slide my screw through here and then I'm gonna slide it through the brush. Kind of extend your brush holder out and it will give you more clearance, a little bit more room to work. And if you can have a friend hold your brush, it might help you because they can be a finger pincher. I have my screw started there. I'm just gonna tighten it up the rest of the way. And then my end cap will be ready to go on. I am ready to install my new drive. I'm putting a brand new one on since this one is so worn out. You can see how the teeth are worn down on the drive here. So that needs to be replaced. And uh, if yours needs to be replaced as well, we sell a brand new drive assembly, just like you see it here. Don't forget about your little half moon key, which you can set in there. I'm gonna spin this around so that it lines up. Make sure that it stays. There we go. That slides right on. I'm just gonna slip this bolt out so I can see the hole lines up through the spring and into the shaft of the armature. And I'm gonna get that started. Tighten this up and then bend the lock over so that they stay in place. I have all three of my spacers placed on the end here. The thicker spacers go on first and the thinnest one is at this end. So they'll slide on. I did put a little bit of grease on the end of my shaft here because that's where my new bushing is going to attach. You can do that at all three of your bushing places. Once you have that all set, I notice that I did get my locks folded back over and you can put your nose cone on the end just like so. It's good to check that this is moving freely and that everything's operating well and then you can put your two screws in the end here. 
The end of my nose cone is secured into the vise here, so now I'm ready to put the cover on. This is directional, so maybe if you made a mark before you took it apart or you can uh, remember how you had it, most of the time there's a dowel that you will line up as well on your starter. So you set your uh, fields and your case onto the armature, and then you can put your cap on. So this I'm going to line up these wires that connect to the fields, I'm just gonna set out there so that they don't get uh, trapped inside there and then um, I'll attach them at the end. So you have to take a screwdriver like this and kind of bend out all of your brushes so that they can drop around the end of the armature. And you can kind of do them one by one and then they'll slide down just like that and then lastly, you can just secure your wires to the fields with the same screws that you took off. They'll kind of tuck inside there, just like so. I have my starter back onto my tractor. I was able to get these long bolts through the entire starter, so it's ready to go onto the tractor. I also have the dust cover on. My starter cable is connected, as well as my battery cable. So now we're ready to go ahead and start the tractor up and show you the improvement on the starter from this rebuild. I'm gonna start it up here with my tractor in neutral. Very nice. You can see how quickly the tractor starts up. That's a result of the new drive being installed. It really responds quickly. It doesn't have any drag or lag to it at all. The starter repair was a success and this tractor starts very easily. I hope that this video is helpful to you so that you can make the same repair on your own tractor. When you're ready to do so, we do offer all of the parts and you can buy them at farmtractorrepair.com. We'd be happy to send them to you so that you can fix your Delco starter on your tractor. Also, you can subscribe to our channel because we release new videos all the time.